Hey, hello, and welcome back to my AuthorTube channel. I am Autumn Ashley, and we are going to be working on brainstorming and outlining my new shiny idea. So if you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that I'm starting a new book. I attempted to pants it. I talked about that pantsing experience, and now we are going to circle back, start brainstorming and outlining this story. So I'm taking you along with this experience to share my ideas and my plans that I have for outlining this story. If you have watched any of my videos about Project Brina, which was my other project, I used the three act nine block 27 chapter structure to outline that story and I used it twice. I like that method however I want to expand on it because I think that outlining method was great for the time but I'm trying to level up my writing and level up my outlining so I'm ready to move on from using that outlining method. With that being said, we are going to talk about the different kinds of outlining methods I want to include um, or try out with this story because I'm so open to new ideas. I love trying something new and I love learning and new experiences because these new experiences make me feel like I keep it funky fresh with my writing. I, I just like diving in and just trying new things because it's, it's good to be like that because it helps with not only my, my writing and like that creativity part of myself, that, that creativity, that creative part of myself, but it also helps keep me on my toes. I have a few different things that I want to pull from to create a new outlining method to see if it's going to work for me. I have a new notebook that I have not unwrapped yet that we're going to put everything for this new story, Project Burning Roses, is going to go in here. But we're going to open this a little bit later. We're going to start diving into it. But I want to talk about what I want to include in this notebook, the sources that I'm going to pull from, and all that fun stuff. Um, I'm also going to create a mood board on Pinterest, which is something I like to do, but I don't want to be consumed because I know on Pinterest it can get really addicting very fast, you know, just pinning things left and right. There are certain things in my mind that I want to put on this board that will help keep the mood and the tone of the story where I want it. This new project, I want it to be somewhat dark and very magical and mystical. So those are the, the pins that I'm going to be looking for. And there are certain pins that I want on this board already. I'm gonna take a little bit of time to slap those on this new Pinterest board. Uh, the next thing that I want to, oh, the battery's dying and we just started, hang on. Okay, I don't remember exactly the last thing that I said, but I do know I wanted to also say I do want to create a YouTube playlist with some songs that help push this story forward. I really like having a YouTube playlist for all of my stories because one, they help me when I'm driving in my car and I don't want to listen to like pop songs or country and I just want to focus on my story and wind down and just listen to nice calming music, <laughs> which isn't really my stories, but you get what I'm saying. I like a certain mood. I'm also going to put myself on a deadline for this story. My point of me doing a deadline, when I don't give myself a deadline, uh, and it's going to be a loose deadline, but when I don't give myself a deadline, I feel like I tend to take my time and procrastinate and then only work on like certain things. I'm having this deadline and it's a very loose deadline. So if I finish it before or a few days after, it's not going to be that big of a deal. The point of this is to keep moving my story forward. I'm hoping that this is going to work for me because I feel like if I spend too much time outlining or working on one thing, I get bored. So having this short deadline is going to help keep me motivated and going to help keep pushing the story and pushing my writing forward. This is not only going to be like an exercise to build my writing and my craft, but it's also to help push this story in the direction that it needs to go so I can get a first draft written. So that's the whole point of me having this loose deadline. As I'm filming this video, it is March 24th. I want to finish the brainstorming and the outlining process. I want to finish it by April 9th. Let's count how many days that is. Two, it's like two weeks and a couple of days. And I honestly feel like that is going to be plenty of time to figure out the key parts of the story that I want and to get a good mind set of who my characters are, their motivations, a good backbone, and a good beginning, a pretty decent middle, and where I want the story to end. I do have the beginning and the end up here, but we need to work it out. We need to put it on paper. Um, and that's how we're going to do this. I'm going to spend a lot of my time putting all the notes in a physical notebook. I do have a 
what are they called? Google Doc that has some of those scenes and some notes, but for the most part, I wanna keep it handwritten. And my point of also trying to do this more handwritten than so much on the computer to start with. I can always change it later, but to start with my plan is to get it written out and to take my time. And as I'm writing these things out, because writing is so much different than actually just typing things out, I want to continuously be thinking about this story and really thinking about the things that I'm writing, like the whys. Why am I putting this down? Why am I taking the time to actually physically write this out? What does this mean for the story? So that's why I'm going to put everything down in here for the most part. I have a few things in a Google Doc. I might slap some things in Google Docs throughout this whole process. I'll let you guys know, but for the most part, everything for the story is going to be written in this journal. When I would write stories when I was younger, I would keep like a physical notebook and I do have a notebook that has all of my general writing ideas, tips, everything for my authortube channel. So it's nice to have a notebook that is dedicated just to one specific story. What am I going to put in this journal? You might be asking. Well, I'm so glad you asked that because I actually have an answer. I have this nice, cute little sheet that is really nice and pretty and color coded that I may or may not have wrote, written, created when I had some downtime at work that we will not speak of. <laughs> I'm gonna try to get a nice close up of this for you guys so you can see what exactly I did for this. It's to basically break up everything for my outlining and my brainstorming with some of the things that I want to include in my journal and some things just to keep in mind to think to think about as we are going through this whole process. The things that I'm saying aren't going to be necessarily in this order, um, but when I put them in my notebook, there are certain things that I want to be like first in the notebook and I'll talk about that later. But some of the things that I want to include in my notebook are pages for the outline. All of the ideas that I have so far in my mind or that I have written out in a Google Doc, I wanna put all of that in the notebook. I want to talk a, a lot more about my main character and some of my secondary characters as well. I want to describe the world so far of what I have in the story, I want to describe that world and all the moving pieces in the world. So what are the politics? What are the religions? How big is this society? Is it the entire world that's like this? Is this story only taking place in one kingdom or one part of the world, one territory, and there's a whole vast world um, around this, this, this group of people. I also want to keep reminders to myself. Why does this matter? Who cares? What if? And so what's the point? So I wanna keep those questions throughout my notebook as well, just to constantly remind myself the whys and the whos and the whats of storytelling and trying to develop the story. So I wanna keep that in there. Of course, my favorite are the lore and history of my story. I love creating the lore and the history of the stories, but one thing I want to keep reminding myself is the lore and the history are very important to the story, but they might not be included in the story. So that's something I want to constantly remind myself to spend time on the lore and the history, but don't spend three days working on it if it's not going to necessarily be included in the story. So just to be sure, I keep enough lore and history in my outline and in my notebook, but not so much that there's more history and lore than there is of the actual story that's going to be told. Also, I do have things to do, which we talked about the Pinterest board, the YouTube playlist, and to actually physically start outlining. So I'm writing craft books. So far, there's going to be more books that I would like to add to this list. But so far, I do have Save the Cat and Story Genius. I'm going to use only certain things of these books to help push the story forward. I'm not using all of them and only bits and pieces that I feel like I need to help benefit the story. I have also been listening to Brandon Sanderson's lectures on YouTube and you guys, can I marry him? Because he is amazing. If you have not watched and listened to his lectures, you need to do so because they are so flippin' beneficial. And he starts like at the very beginning. Well, first he talks about <laughs> the intro to everything all things writing. And then he goes literally all the way to publication. I haven't made it that far in all of his videos, but I highly recommend them. They are very, very beneficial. And since I'm starting the outlining and the plotting, it's a perfect time for me to start listening to these. So I'm gonna leave that linked in the description box below, as well as his website, um, talking about his brainstorming and his outlines for Way of Kings. I did talk about the three act nine block, 27 chapter structure. That's something I'm not quite sure if I'm going to use it for this story. It's a great outlining method, but I do think it doesn't and keep a lot of the subplots straight. And then the next one is bullet point method of outlining. I've done the bullet points in the past. It hasn't been my favorite, but I think since I have some, I 
ideas and key scenes that I have already written out. I think the bullet point method will be good for documenting all of those key scenes and some of the things that I have and then I can expand on those later. I'm open to trying the bullet point method again just in a different way than I've done it in the past because in the past it was like the only outlining that I would do and it just didn't work for me because I needed more elements of the story. I'm willing to give the bullet point method a shot again but to do it loosely and to do it with only the ideas that I have so far just to get them out of my mind and onto the page. Another outlining method that is a very interesting outlining method is the snowflake method. I think he's a physicist that came up with this outlining method and it's very detailed. It's a very good outlining method. I just don't think all parts of that outlining method are going to work for me and I'm not going to force it to work for me. So I'm going to take bits and pieces that I would like to try and then apply it to my writing and apply it to working on my outlines. The other one is the plot grid and this one, the famous author JK Rowling, she used this outlining method. I would be open to using this outlining method when I create more subplots. I like the idea of this. I've watched plenty of videos. Actually, a few of my authortube friends created videos plotting like JK Rowling and Claire Fraze actually went through a really great explanation of doing the plot grid. So I'm gonna leave those videos linked in the description box below if you would like to check those out because they did very good at explaining them. And I do think that it's a very great outlining method, but I don't think my story is quite far enough along for this outlining method to work. That's something I might circle back to a little bit later to um, plot my story once I have a good understanding of what the subplots are going to be. The last one was Story Genius. There was a lot in the second part that I would like to reread and take notes on, put some sticky notes in here to reference when I get to certain parts for my main character and in my story. There was a blueprint in here too that I would like to return to. I think that was in part three. There are some authors that I would like to just kind of think about and to pull inspiration from. I've been really feeling Brandon Sanderson lately. I've never read any of his books just because they really intimidate me. I would love to flip and be able to read his books, but because they are so chunky, I'm afraid that my attention span isn't gonna be able to hold, but I still respect him. Another one of my favorite authors is V.E. Schwab. I love that you can see the progress that she's made and the strides that she's made in her writing. So I do really respect her and draw inspiration from this author because she is awesome. And I love that she loves what she does. And then the last person on here is Trisha Levenseller. She's one of my new favorite authors. She just writes really cute. I say they're cute, um, but some of it can be a little, Dark. I do really like Trisha Levenseller because I just enjoy her writing style. I feel like it's really light, even though there are some dark situations that some of the characters get into. I do really appreciate her writing. I can learn a lot from her and from her writing. So I have her on here because I really enjoy all of the books that I have read of hers. Lastly on here, I have the two novels that I really pull a lot of the inspiration from, which is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and The Hunger Games. So those are the two stories I'm trying to mesh and then put my own spin on it and put that in a dark magical world. I have about eight tips to myself to just remember through the process is to have fun, enjoy the process, be open to new ideas, drink water, always ask myself why, doubt my character's motives, love my story, and be kind to my mind. I love this. I want to keep this with me at all times as I'm working on this story and future stories, especially the tips at the bottom that I'm giving myself. That's just a fun little sheet of paper that I made and I was just happy to share it. So the next part that I want to break down before we get really into it. And in my notebook for the first few pages, I want to keep as reminders, like those questions, why, who cares, what's the point, and so, so what, who cares, questions like that to help keep the story moving forward. And then just to keep reminding myself that each scene and each chapter should have a beginning, middle, and end, and a cause and effect. And to keep little tips on the first few pages for myself, if I ever get into a rut, I can return back to those first few pages and then just keep in mind the things that are going to help push the story forward. On the first few pages as well, I want to write down my original idea. I want to write down the original pitch that I had, all of the original brainstorming things that are in my mind and I have written down on the Google Doc. I want to put all of that in here just to remind myself that as I'm going through the whole outlining process and as I'm going through writing the draft, sometimes we get a little lost, right? Sometimes we, we lose sight of the original idea and what we want 
wanted the story to be. So I want to put the original ideas in here as a reminder to myself as to, hey, this is where I wanted the story to go. And this, this was the original idea that I wanted the story to be. I also want to include on this page some of the genre ideas that I have for this story, uh, some word counts, the things that I want to keep in mind. And I do have some other fun little titles and taglines that I want to keep on the first few pages just to kind of keep it light and fluffy and fun and just to remind myself that the writing process should be fun. I should be enjoying what I'm doing because I write for fun. Even though this notebook is going to be my lifeline to this story, it shouldn't read blandly. I should enjoy opening the story. I should enjoy opening this notebook and I should enjoy working on the story. So they're just constant reminders to myself just to have fun, the original ideas, and where we want the story to go. The next few pages are probably going to read more of like journal entries for myself because I want to share my thoughts before I actually start working on the outlining process. So I want to share my thoughts to myself, where I think the story is going to go, how I'm feeling about the story currently. I want to include all of this stuff. And my point of including all of this stuff too is to remember my feelings and my thoughts and how excited and inspired I was when I first started writing this story. And a year from now, I can look back and be like, oh, Baby Autumn was so happy with the story. What the hell happened? I want to include that in this as well because it's all part of the journey for this story. I want to be open and honest with myself, with my writing, with the story. I mean, we're gonna be bonded. Once I tear this open, we're gonna be bonded for life. So it's gonna be, it's a big deal. And this relationship should be open and honest at all times. And then once we do all of that fun stuff <laughs> at the very beginning, I am actually going to start brainstorming the ideas. New ideas, all ideas, everything I can think of. We are putting down bullet point method, jotting them down, and we're getting down and dirty. That is everything that's gonna go in this puppy. So I'm very excited to dive into this and start working hardcore. We're gonna make progress and I'm really excited to start working on this. That's everything I wanted to talk about, everything I want to include in my notebook, the resources I'm going to pull from. The next step is to create the Pinterest board, do the YouTube playlist, and then this monstrosity that is currently off camera <laughs> that you can't see, we're diving in. We're diving in and we are making strides in this story. It's been calling to me for a very long time and it's time. It is so flipping time to, to work on this. Okay, so let's do this. This uh, isn't as got it. All right. Let's do this. This notebook is actually really nice. I don't know if you can tell, but it's real leather. It's very nice, and it has little uh, two little book tab things bottom and a place to put a pen. So I, I like it. This was a very good purchase. Thank you, Big Sibling. I'm still getting some of the Pinterest mood board set up and I'm doing some character fan art of both Addie LaRue and The Hunger Games since I'm pulling a lot of inspiration from those two stories. I want to pull the certain parts of those stories that I absolutely love and I'm putting them in my mood board. But looking at all of this fan art, oh my gosh, you guys, the 
freaking feels. I'm loving it. I think for my Pinterest board, I think we're going to be done for now because I know I'm going to get really excited and we're just going to get consumed by this Pinterest board. Let's move on to making my playlist. It shouldn't take me too long because I already have a few songs that I want to put on this playlist. So we're going to do that and then we are actually going to start working on the actual this whatever this thing is called, the notebook. I wrote down a little bit here, just talking about um, the pitch that I had, another title that I was kind of playing around with because why not, that's always fun. And then a cool tagline that I have so far. I'm not sharing any of this quite yet, just because I don't have a lot of the story actually written out and I haven't talked a lot about it with you guys, so it won't make a whole lot of sense. Let's do playlist. I have made my playlist on YouTube. I will leave that linked in the description box below in case you want to just check it out if there's anything on there that you think would be beneficial to you. If you just think it would be your jam, have at it, have fun. Let me know if you do end up using it. I think that'd be really cool. I've made those two things. Those were two of the big things that I wanted to make. So now that we've got all the fun stuff taken care of, we're continuing to dive deep into the notebook. I want to get some of my thoughts and my ideas and my feelings towards story. I do want to get that written out first. So I think that's what I'm going to do. shared a little bit of what I wrote in my journal to start with. Um, my whole point of wanting to do a little bit of the beginning as just my thoughts and my feelings is to not lose sight of that original idea that I have. And I want to remind myself that, you know, it's okay to um, hit speed bumps. It's okay to feel like I'm not sure where I'm going. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Everything is going to be okay. We are going to survive not only the outlining and the brainstorming process, but we are going to survive the whole writing of the draft revisions. We're going to survive it. The story is going to survive it. I'm going to survive it. It's going to be okay. All, all is going to be well. So that was some of the stuff that I had written here. I didn't share that part of it, but I've written several pages of all of this. Now, 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 what's next? Okay, I think, I think I should go ahead and start actually physically working on outlining the story. I think the first thing I need to do is to write out all of the ideas that I have for the story. And I think instead of writing it in black, I wanna keep it funky fresh. I have a whole bunch of these uh, colored pens. I think I wanna do my original ideas. Um, let's do them in blue. And I do want to talk a little bit about this with you guys. So I'm gonna create a section. I can never spell original right. Why? Why? I don't know. Origin? Ow. Okay. I wrote some of this stuff down because I knew <laughs> I wanted to talk about it and they weren't necessarily spoilers. I definitely want to incorporate a, an interesting relationship with a supernatural creature. So let me jot that down. I want to dive a little bit deeper into just like thinking about Addie LaRue, some of like the key things that I liked about her character specifically. And in my story, their competition type thing is not going to be necessarily like how it was in the Hunger Games where they fight to the death. That's not the way that my competition in my story is going to be. But um, they are going to be unfair trials and situations that these teens, these characters are going to be put into um, that the government forces them to go into. I know I said this at the beginning, but this is something I also need to figure out if 
this government is this whole like a territory or the whole world or if it's just a small piece like if these people are on a small island is it just this island is this the reason why nobody leaves this island or do they leave this island to do these competitions do they return and they're different because of the trials that they go on these are just the ideas but i definitely have to ask a lot more questions <laughs> i need to expand on how the world looks so like the society the world, the religion, the jobs that these people do. I do think writing in a desert <laughs> would be kind of interesting, especially since I live in the South and the weather is very hot. It's not a desert, but it's very hot and humid. I feel like I would really like pulling from those kinds of ideas that I personally would live through. I could not imagine having some type of competition battle of my life in a hundred in 10 degrees with 90% humidity. I couldn't imagine. So I know Addie LaRue doesn't really talk much about the government. It's really just Addie selling her soul and then being alone for hundreds of years. I know I'm going to pull a lot of my ideas and everything from The Hunger Games and how I would put my own spin on a very corrupt government. These are all the ideas that we have written so far. I've talked about a lot of them. Let me finish writing out these original ideas and I will check in with you guys in a bit. Something else I wanted to add, I'm still writing down my original ideas, but this was something that I thought of. I do want to say that the way I want to work on this story, even though I have my outlining deadline by um, April 9th, I want to try this new, well, it's not new, but it's gonna be new to me. I want to try this outlining method. I want to outline a little bit, draft, outline, draft. Uh, however much it takes for me to actually finish the story. My ideas for this outlining to be due then, I was talking about I want a beginning, you know, the stuff that happens in the middle, and then the ending. For this part of my outlining process, I'm getting out all the original ideas. I'm working on the beginning. I've been reading and researching, and this was something that I didn't do with my first project is stories are more interesting from what I've read. Stories are more interesting when they start in the middle of another story. I want to work on who my main character is, what she was doing and what her life was like before the story started, and then work on building my first act and the first part of my story. I have an idea for an ending. I want to write out that idea that I have for the ending, do some more research and make sure I have a good solid idea of where I want the story to end. So I have a good beginning and I have a good ending. And then I can, as I am drafting, once I get past this outlining stage and I get enough outlined where I feel like I can have a good solid start of a draft, then I will start drafting. And then if I'm feeling I'm not quite sure which road to take, or if I feel completely stuck, I can return back to my outlines of the original notes that I have and those original ideas, go back a little bit, make sure that I'm on the right track that I want the story to go on, outline a little bit more, and then return back to the story. So it's going to be very chill. We're going to be open to new ideas. We're going to be open to changes in how I'm drafting, how I'm outlining. So we're just going to play it out and see how it all goes. Hope for the best. So let me finish writing out these original ideas and we'll see what we end up doing next. are making progress. I feel like I'm spending a lot of time. <laughs> I mean, I'm saying I'm making, oh, this battery's dying. What the heck? Hang on. I don't know why both of those batteries just died. I don't, I guess, well, obviously they weren't fully charged, um, but that's okay. I have a third battery. <laughs> oh, that's done. Okay, great. Okay, we're, we're fun in our way back, guys. Give me one second. I have just now finished out writing out the different kinds of outlining methods that I could potentially use for this story. And I did talk about those a little bit earlier. I wrote them down 
in my journal and I took some notes next to them. I'm about to go through Story Genius. I want to focus on part two and part three. And then the next one, I need to find out where the beat sheet is in Save the Cat and mark that with a sticky note so I can revisit that as we get deeper in the outlining process. We're going to get back to the outlining. I am going to um, do the, the books now and maybe put some notes in the margins. I have given myself permission that I can write in these if I oh so choose because I'm probably never gonna get rid of them. I mean, I can, I can love them. I can write in them. We're going to slowly but surely start working on actually outlining the story. I think that's it. All right, let's do this. Y'all, so we're going to listen to my Project Burning the Roses playlist as we go through um, all of the books. So let's, let's do it. Let's go. start. I have a little bit already just tabbed. I have not written <laughs> in the books. I haven't braved that far. I think once we start actually trying to make comparisons and working on it, um, we're going to be writing in it. But I did go ahead and tab some of the, the more important things. And I did the same with Save the Cat. I wanted to make sure that I got the beat sheet, the overview, and then when it goes into more detail of each of the individual parts. I think we've got all of that done. I know this was a lot that I wanted to do before working on the physical story. I think we've made some pretty big progress. <laughs> this was only the first day, but it's been about three hours. Just to recap what I've put so far in my notebook, I put the original project ideas, any other ideas that I had as I was thinking and some of the ideas that I had written down in my Google Docs. I put all of that down. I put notes to myself, you know, to be kind to my writing, have fun, enjoy the process, but that's what we got. That's how we're doing this. I think that's going to be it for this video. We did a lot of work. I'm going to continue to work on outlining and I will check in with you guys tomorrow. We're going to see how it goes. But if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to my channel and you would like to follow me on this journey and hear more about my outlining process and how the story is going, please be sure to subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.